Okay, for question number 20, we are going to graph 9x squared plus 4y squared plus 36x minus 32y plus 64. It's equal to 0. And notice that we have x squared and y squared together in the equation. So we can expect to have the graph to be either a circle, or ellipse, or hyperbola. Okay? And in order for us to get one of those equations, one of those graphs, we have to make sure to get the center first. And to do that, we will have to complete the squares. Let's put all the x together. Namely, I see that I have the x, 9x squared here. I will put together with the 36x. So, I'll begin by writing down 9x squared plus 36x. Okay. And then I will also put the y's together. Perhaps I'll leave some space here. I have plus 4y squared and that go with the negative 32y, wow, the minus 32y. So I put the x together and the y's together. Here, the 64, it's just a number by itself. I will kick the 64 to the other side by subtracting 64 on both sides. So that side will equal to negative 64. So that should be the first step before we get ready or do, to do anything. Now the x's are together and the y's are together and we have a number on the right hand side. And then write down what do we need to complete the square. So I'll just write down complete um, the squares. This is how we would need to do it. The first thing that we need is that we are going to focus on x squared plus bx. That's what we need first. Namely, I want to make sure that the square term has a coefficient 1. Okay? But here, we have 9x squared. So that's not what we want. And in this equation, we cannot just divide everything by 9. Because if we do divide by 9 right here, when we want to complete the square for the y, we will get 4 over 9. So we cannot do much with that. So the way that to go wrong with that is we are going to factor out a 9 from the x right here. Okay? So it's going to look like I have a 9 here and a 36. It's pretty nice. Both of them are divisible by 9. Factor out the 9. Now open the big parentheses like this. So 9x squared, the 9 is outside already. I have x squared left. Originally, I have plus 36x, the 9 is out already, so I have plus 4x. It's like 36 divided by 9, I get 4, and then attach the x. Still leave some space right here. And then let's do the same for the y. I have the 4 here and the negative 32. Let's factor out 4, open the parentheses. So 4y squared, the 4 is out already, I have y squared, I have negative 32y originally, we factor out a 4, so we have minus 8y. And all that should equal to negative 64. So this is what we want, x squared plus bx. And that's what we have in the first parentheses. And for the second parentheses, we just have the y, y squared plus by. And in this case, uh, b is negative 8. Next, what we want to do is, we are going to add the number that's going to help us complete the square on both sides. We are going to add 1 half times b. And once again, b is the number in front of the x, when you have 1 in front of the x squared. Okay? We are going to add 1 half times b square on um, both sides of the equations. We're going to add one half of x, one half of b, sorry, one half of b, square that on both sides. So paying attention to this parentheses, my b value will be positive four. Okay? So the number that we need to add is I will have to take one half times four and square that. Well, 1 half times 4 is just equal to 2. Okay. 
one half of four is equal to two. And I need to square that, which I will get just a positive four. So this is the number that I have to add to this. So let me write this down, plus four, okay? And I'm going to add this on both sides. However, this is the part that you have to be really careful because I add a four right here in the parentheses. Normally, you will have to distribute the nine and the four, right? So if we pay attention to the nine front of the parentheses, nine times four is technically 36. Nine times four is 36. So we are going to add 36 on the other side as well. Once again, nine times four is positive 36. We are going to add 36 on the other side to balance the equation. Let's do that for the y's. y squared minus eight y. So the b in this case will be negative eight. So the number that we need to add will be, I will take one half times negative eight, square that, okay? One half times negative eight will be negative four, square that, that will be positive 16. So we are going to add 16 inside of this parentheses, okay? And similar to what we did over there, if we add 16 inside of the parentheses, we have to pay attention to what's outside of the parentheses. We have a four on the outside, a positive four on the outside. So we are going to make sure when you do four times 16, you get positive 64. And that's the number that we are going to add on the other side as well. Once again, four times 16 is positive 64. That's why we have to add 64 on the right hand side like that. Okay, after we add the four right here inside the parentheses, this part right here will guarantee to be factorable, okay, if we do the formula correct. And of course we did. So for the first part, I will get nine, and when you have x squared plus four x plus four, this will be x plus two times x plus two. So I can just write this down as x plus two squared. And for the second part, if you factor this out, the y squared minus eight y plus 16, that will be y minus four, times y minus four. So we will have plus four times y minus four squared, okay? And notice that this two is exactly the same as this two when you do one half times b. And the minus four right here, it's exactly the same as this minus four when you do the one half times b, okay? So the, right, the left hand side will be equal to negative 64 plus 36 plus 64, which is just 36, okay? And now we are going to make sure we can write this in the standard form. And to do that, I will have to make the 36 on the right-hand side equals to one. To do that, I can just divide by 36 on all three terms. This way, the 36 over 36 will be just one. Okay, so I have one on the right hand side, and here we get nine over 36, it's the same as one over four. So I will write this as x plus two on the top over four on the bottom, like that, plus four over 36, it will be one over nine. So it will be y minus four, square over nine. And as you can see that, this is almost like the standard form of an ellipse, okay? And to make this equation in the standard form, let me show you how. Instead of writing x plus two inside of the parentheses, I'll write this part as x. Instead of writing x plus two, I'll write x minus negative two squared that over and instead of writing the 4 I'll write this as 2 squared okay and instead of writing the y minus 4 like all in black I'll write this as plus y minus 4 in red square over I'll write the 9 as 3 squared and that's equal to 1 
Okay? And this is the most important equation that we're going to look at because it will tell us the center and how far left, how far right, how far up, how far down that we have to go to get our graph. So we can finish this up. The center is going to be at negative 2, comma, positive 4. Let's graph the center first. So uh, let me try to make my graph look nice for you guys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Once again, center will be negative 2, positive 4. Negative 2 is right here. And 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 4 will be right here. Okay? And let's look at what we have underneath the x. I have 2 squared. I'm looking at this red 2. This red 2 will tell us how far left, how far right that we have to go. So I have to move from the center once, twice to the left. Okay, that will be my new point. And then from the center, I will also have to go once to the right, twice to the right. And that's another point. Okay. So once again, this is my center. Maybe I'll just make it back so you guys can see it. And from the center, we have 3 squared. We are looking at the 3. This number is underneath the y. That will tell us how far up, how far down that we have to go. From the center, I will go up once, twice, three times, which will be right there. And then I will also go down once, twice, three times to another point, which is right there. And as you can see, we have uh, like a cross like, like this, right? And to finish our graph, I just need to make a nice ellipse. So it's not exactly like a circle, but rather it looks like a uh, like an egg. Okay. So yeah, that's it. And